The Pilgrim's Progress, From This World to That Which Is to Come, by John Bunyan, dramatized for radio by Brian Sibley, starring Anton Rogers and Neil Dudgeon. Part two, The Journey to Vanity Fair. As I walked through the wilderness of this world, I lighted on a certain place where was a den and I laid me down in that place to sleep and as I slept I dreamed a dream I see in my dream a man called Christian who lives in the city of destruction and who is weighed down by a great burden strapped to his back reading of the terrible fate that is going to befall his city he sets out upon a pilgrimage to the celestial city. After encountering many difficulties on the road, he comes to a narrow gate and is directed to a hill on which stands a cross. Here, Christian's burden falls from his shoulders. He continues on his way, following the road up the side of the hill difficulty, stumbling and scrambling on hands and knees. Then, Halfway to the top, he comes upon a garden put there by the Lord of the Hill as a place of rest for weary travellers. Oh. oh, it's so peaceful here. Oh. Mustn't stay too long. Oh. Lie here for a while. Get my strength back. Maybe take a look in the scroll that the three shining ones gave me at the cross. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. So Christian, at ease for the first time on his journey, slumbers and then falls into a deep, deep sleep. The hours pass. How long have I slept? I, oh, it's late. It's almost night. I shouldn't have lost so much time. I must go on at once. Whatever's wrong? <laughs> Barely escaped with our lives. Mm -hmm. I'm Timorous. Mm -hmm. This is Miss Trust. We were going to the Celestial City. Oh, as am I. Then turn back now. Well, you can. But why? Great savage beasts. Right in our path. Couldn't have passed them without being torn to pieces. Oh. We turn back. So will you, if you've any sense. Well, come on. Come on. Let's get out of here. Quickly. Take, take our advice. Fly for your life. Fly where? Where can I go to be safe? To go back to the city of destruction is nothing but death. To go on, maybe to go on in fear of death, but, but beyond it, life everlasting. On, I'll go on. I'll look in my scroll for some words of encouragement. No. No. It's gone. Gone. Oh, where can it be? What will I do? I, I shall be turned away at the celestial gate. Oh, it, I must go back. Look for it. Find it. Back he goes, looking on this side and on that. Oh, oh what a fool I am. Oh, God forgive me for my stupidity. Till he comes again to the garden where he searches high and low for the scroll, but in vain. <laughs> oh, I'll never find it. What am I going to do? Where? Here, here. 
Oh, 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 here! Oh, 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 here! Yes, here! Oh, oh thank God! Thank God! Oh, oh. Uh, uh, and oh, now, and on again. Oh, to think I, I could have made this journey in daylight instead of gloom and darkness. Can I get by them? Lights over there between the trees. It's a house. Somewhere to stay the night in safety. It's a large house. A, a palace, more like. Oh, lions! <sighs> Perhaps I should turn back. Hello there! Pilgrim! Where are you going? You cannot turn back now! I'll never manage to reach your house along this path! Oh, the lions, you mean? Yes, the lions! Have you so little courage? Uh, the house you see is the Palace Beautiful, and my name is Watchful. I am the porter here. Now listen to me. Yeah. Don't be afraid of the lions. They're here to test the faith of travelers who come this way and to discover those who have no faith at all. Well, it, it, it's hard to have faith faced by such a danger. Oh, yes, my friend, it is. But I'll tell you this. The lions are chained up. I can't see any chains. Well, of course not. If you could see the chains, then you would not need to rely on faith. Now, walk forward and take care to stay in the middle of the path. Oh, come, will you not try? Yes! Yes! I will! They are chained. They are. I can't see the chains, but they're there. They can't reach me. They can't. Oh. <laughs> oh. They really are chained up. Keep walking. You're almost there. Well done, Pilgrim. Welcome to the Palace Beautiful. Whose house is this? It was built by the Lord of the Hill as a safe haven for pilgrims. Well, then might I find lodging here for the night? The way ahead is dark, and I am tired and hungry. I will call for one of the daughters who will live in this house. According to the palace rules, it is for them to decide whether you may come in and stay a while. Welcome, sir. My name is Discretion. I am Christian. A pilgrim, my lady, seeking lodging for the night. Very well. Sisters? Christian, these are my sisters. Prudence, piety, and charity. Ladies? Sisters, a weary pilgrim asks if he may stay in our house. Having made so many mistakes and taken so many wrong turnings, I am perhaps not worthy to come in. There are few who are, and fewer who know it. Well said, piety and prudence. Charity? Let him enter, so that he can rest and be refreshed. Then we are agreed. This is the house of the Lord of the Hill, you have his blessing and we welcome you. Come in. Drink and eat, Christian, for food from the Lord's table will refresh and nourish you. Thank you, my lady. What made you take up the pilgrim's life? It was when I realized that the city where I lived and all of us there were doomed to destruction. Oh, I wonder. Prudence, do you sometimes think of that country you came from? Yes, yes, I do but only with shame. 
besides, I long to live in a better country, and I believe that the celestial city is that country. Well, what do you hope to find there? Oh, I hope to be rid of all those things that I most dislike in my character. But most of all, I hope to see alive the man who hung dead upon the cross. Though I know all too little about him, I... I love him because he took away my burden. What else have you heard about that place? I've heard there is no death there, only life everlasting. That is the reward that awaits every faithful pilgrim at the road's end. Are you married? Oh, God. <laughs> do you have a family? Yes, I am, well, and I do. But you did not bring them with you? I tried. I told them the little that I had learned, but they could not, or would not, understand. Well, it was a hard decision to leave behind those you love and set out alone upon this road. Mm. Yes, it was hard, Charity. It is hard. Oh, remember how you discovered the road that you are on and found the courage to take it. Pray, then, that those you love and have left behind may make the same discovery and one day follow in your footsteps. Now, it is getting late and you should take some rest. We have a room prepared for you, the best in this house. Its window opens towards the rising sun and it is called Peace. In the morning, we will help prepare you for the journey that lies ahead. Come. Follow me. I will show you. This is the study. So many books. Indeed, there are a great many. Some tell the story of the Lord of the Hill himself. Some recount the heroic and courageous deeds done by others in his name. Others list the names of those who have lived and died in his service. Oh. There is much to be learned from these volumes. Mm. Also kept here are rare and precious items of great antiquity. Oh. That is the staff that parted the waters to make a path through the Red Sea. Oh. And over there are the trumpets that were blown to bring down the walls of the mighty city Jericho. <laughs> and there is the slingshot and stone with which a mere shepherd boy slew a giant. And here, here is the most priceless of all our treasures. Hmm? Inscribed on this great scroll is the family tree and pedigree of the Lord of the Hill. It is possible to trace his ancestry back to the beginning of all beginnings, showing the Lord of the Hill to be the true son of the Ancient of Days. Always remember that you were shown these things. Oh. Now it is time for you to go on. But because many dangers lie before you, we will first take you to the palace armory. Christian. My lady. Put on the whole armor made for you by the Lord of the Hill, so that you may withstand an attack from the Lord of Evil or his servants. To protect your legs, put on these greaves. They are truth. Your feet shall be shod with the gospel of peace. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take the shield of faith. The helmet of salvation. The sword that is the word of the Lord. And take this blade too. More powerful than any two-edged sword. It is called prayer. Now come and we will see you to your road. Now, look away there to the south. What do you see? A beautiful country. That is Emmanuel's land. Does it belong to the Lord of the Hill? He gave it as common land to be enjoyed by all the pilgrims who come by this road. And beyond are the delectable mountains. When you reach them, you will see clearly all the way to the celestial city. Will I meet any other pilgrims along the way? There are always pilgrims travelling this road. Watchful? Our porter watchful will know. My lady? Have any other pilgrims passed by today? Uh, there was one, my lady. I asked his name and he told me it was Faithful. Faithful? Well, I know him. He's a near neighbour of mine in the town where I was born. He was so determined to reach the Celestial City that he wouldn't stop for a rest. How far is he ahead of me? He'll have reached the bottom of the hill by now, but you're both following the same road, so you may well meet him along the way. <laughs> Thank you, Watchful, for your help and kindness to a poor pilgrim. Godspeed, my friend! Now be careful and watch your step. The path leads down into the Valley of Humiliation, and it is steep and slippery. 
Here is a loaf of bread for your journey. And a bottle of wine. And a handful of sweet raisins. Thank you. Now, farewell, Christian. And may you safely reach the celestial city. Farewell. 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 <laughs> this must be a great humiliation. I beg your pardon, sir? A cob. Clerk of the peace. Mr. Cobb? Yes, a terrible humiliation. To be locked up like a common felon. Oh, I have no complaints, Mr. Cobb. The Lord for whose sake I've been in prison was himself treated as a common fellow. Yeah. You should beware of the sin of presumption, Bunyan. <laughs> in any event, I have been sent to tell you yet again that you must submit yourself to the laws of the land. Or else... It sounds, it... Mr. Cobb, as if you've come to threaten me. Or else it will go worse for you when your case next comes before the court. Even, as you've already been told, to your being banished and exiled, or worse. Well? I've answered this matter many times. Yeah, and believe me, sir, you will answer it again, if you refuse to heed my advice. Submit to the laws of the land, Bunyan, and leave off organising those religious meetings. You know they're forbidden by law. That law was made so that someone with an evil purpose against our land might not use the pretense of religion to cover their wickedness. That is so. But my only purpose in meeting with others is to encourage one another towards a greater knowledge and understanding of God's holy word. It's certainly not to disturb the peace of the nation. But what does that prove? Someone whose intentions were to bring about the ruin of the kingdom and commonwealth would say precisely as you have done. I am a loyal subject of the king, Mr. Cobb. But, like his majesty himself, I am first and foremost a loyal subject of the king of heaven. Yes, 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 I dare say. But I really don't think you need be quite so stubborn. Why can't you submit to the law and still try to do as much good as you can in a neighbourly way, without having organised meetings? Teach individuals in private, you mean? Exactly so. There's no law to prevent that. And I'm sure you'd do much good to the Church of Christ if you do that. If I may do good to one in that way, then might I not also do good to two? And if two, then why not to four or eight? Or to an hundred, I dare say. Then, sir, to follow your argument, I should not be prevented from doing as much good to the greatest number possible. <laughs> How many times do I need to tell you you are not an ordained minister? And the law will not tolerate your holding these public meetings. And how many times must I tell you? I dare not ignore that gift which God hath given me. Well then, suppose you were to keep your peace for a while. Sit still and see how things go. And tell me, Mr. Cobb, what do I say? On the day of judgment, when God asked me why I did not do my duty, but behave like a traitor to Christ. It seems that you're not to be reasoned with. Jailer! What good can you do your friends if you're sent away beyond the seas, into Spain or Constantinople or some other remote part of the world? I hope you're listening to Mr. Cobb. And what if the judgment on you is not banishment, but death? Oh, he'll probably go to the gallows defending those principles of his. Is that is what is required of me? Yes. Do you not fear the thought of the hangman's noose? I've seen men hanged, and there were precious few who could climb that ladder without fear. If that is my fate, but I pray that God will not forsake me in such a dark hour. And if he will use my last words to convert one soul among the crowd that come to see me die, then my death will not have been in vain. Well... I truly trust that it will not come to that. My judgment upon you is death! You are a traitor and shall die a traitor's death! What monster is this? The scaly skin of a fish, the mouth of a lion, and the feet of a bear. A foul fiend! With great outstretched dragon wings. Fire and smoke! belching from his belly. I am Apollyon, 
servant lord to the all-powerful Lucifer, Apollyon, the mighty angel of the abyss. Be in great fear of me and tell me where you are going. I am going to the Celestial City! But you live in the City of Destruction! I am the ruler of that place, and you are one of my subjects and a traitor! I will strike you dead with one blow now! If I didn't have hopes that you might still be of service to me. But serving you was hard! No man could live on your wages, for, as it says in this book of mine, the wages of sin is death! Very well. Turn back now, and I promise that in future you shall be better rewarded. I have already agreed to serve another, the Prince of Princes! Ah! It's quite usual for those who declare themselves to be his servants to later give him the slip and come back to me. If you decide to do the same, then all will be well. But I have put all my faith in him. I have given him my word. Ah, ah, ah. Yet you once did the same to me. But the promises I made to you were made when I was ignorant of the truth. I see. And have you considered what is likely to become of you? How most of his servants come to a bad end. Many would consider it a glorious fate to suffer for their king. Strange that he never comes to save those who say that they serve him. I, on the other hand, have often rescued, either by power or fraud, those who have faithfully served me, but who have then had the misfortune to fall into the clutches of him or his servants, just as I am now offering to rescue you. I do not require rescuing! Ah! Do you hear me? You no longer have any power over me! Do you hear me? Do you? John, it's all right. <laughs> Burning up with fever. Two days, day and night. Foul demon! It's your Elizabeth. I'm here. Monster! All the time, calling out, shouting about devils and demons. I do not belong to you! I belong to another, to the Prince of Princes! I am an enemy of your prince, and I will not permit you to take another step upon this road. This is the king's highway, the way of holiness. I care nothing for that. I swear by my infernal kingdom that upon this very road, I will spill your blood. See this lightning dart? It will sear through you like a knife and cut you to the soul. Ah! Christian, prepare to die! Put on the whole armor made for you by the Lord of the Hill. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation. And take the shield of faith. Huh. The shield? You cannot trust your shield to protect you. I have weapons beyond your worst nightmares. Now! Those wounds are but the beginning of all that you will suffer before I am done with punishing you. Take the sword that is the word of the Lord. Do you know this weapon? This sword is the word of the Lord, whose word is truth! You dare 
to strike me? You think your sword can resist the fire from my belly? So much with the sword of truth. I have you now. This next blow is your doom. Reach out. The sword is within your grasp. Seize it, Christian. Rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. Go, foul demon. Uh, you have won this fight, <laughs> but not the battle. Be gone! Uh, uh, I here give thanks to him that, that has delivered me out of the grip uh, of Apollyon. These are leaves of the Tree of Life. Place them on the scars of your battle, and your wounds will be healed. Now, good Christian, drink some wine. Drink. He must drink. Another valley ahead. Here, John. Bleak, arid desert. Just a little sip. Chasms. Crags, bottomless pits, drought, and desolation. No one in sight. This is the valley of the shadow of death. 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 The way ahead is dark. Dark as pitch. No sky. Only clouds of chaos and confusion. The path is narrow. I can scarcely see where I'm putting my feet. Darker still. Who's there? Ah! Oh, look out! You'll knock me off the path! Ah! Stop! I am armed! This sword is the word of the Lord, and I will walk in the strength of the Lord! Ah! Ah! Oh. So many demons! Everywhere. Surrounding me. Wanting me to trip and fall, but I must go on. I must! Why? Yes, why go on? Where are you going, anyway? To the City of Gold. The Celestial City. If it's really there. But it is. It is. Oh, yes, you've been told that it is. But that doesn't make it so. I have to follow the advice of those who put me upon this road. I believe what I've been told is true. And how many other pilgrims have you met coming this way? Only ones that have been headed in the opposite direction. This is the King's Highway. The road laid down by the Lord of the Hill. And what do you know about him? Really? That he died upon the cross. The very cross where my burden fell from my back. That he rose again and lives forever. How do you know he rose from the dead? How do you know that he died? How do you know that he ever lived? Now on, on, step by step. Through this ever darkening gloom. This is a hellish place. Holes and pits, traps and snares, filled with <gasps> bones, ashes, and burnt remains. <coughs> Heat and smoke. <coughs> right here, in the very midst of death, is the yawning mouth of hell. No sword can help me here. <laughs> what am I to do? Put up your sword and take instead that other blade, more powerful than any two-edged sword. It is called prayer. Oh, Lord, I beg thee, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no ill, for thou art with me. Hello? Hello? Morning. Nah. The fever's broken. Oh, thank God. 
It is morning. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Faithful? Hello? It is faithful, isn't it? Yes, Christian, it's me. Well, well, wait for me, won't you? Faithful, wait for me. I daren't. I fear for my life. I must go on. Then I'll have to catch you up. And since we're both headed for the Celestial City, we can travel on together. Look up ahead, Christian. It seems you're to have company on the road. Hello! Why, hello there! Are you going, like us, to the Celestial City? Of course, of course! To the heavenly country. Where else? Then we can all go on together and have some profitable conversation about... Profitable, you say? Oh, indeed. In fact, I always find it very, very acceptable to talk about those things that are profitable and good for me. There are all too few in this world who are willing to invest time in such conversation. Most of the people I meet seem only to wish to be chitter-chattering about things that are of absolutely no value at all. I know this person. She comes from our town. She's called Talkative. Uh, well, then, let's talk. There can be few better things to talk about on Earth than the things of heaven. How very true. Nothing is more pleasant, or, to use your word, profitable. If a person delights in talking about the mystery of things or the history of things or if they love to talk about miracles, wonders or signs, where shall that person find things recorded that are so delightful and so sweetly penned than in the book of books? Yes, as long as such talk is helpful and leads to a better understanding. But of course, what else? That is surely what I said. For to talk of such things is undoubtedly, I will use the word again, Profitable. It is because so few enjoy talk of this kind that so many fail to grasp the need for faith or the need to work at acquiring such knowledge of things eternal. Except that heavenly knowledge is a gift that is given, not something that can be got by work or only by talking about it. Yes, well, I know that, of course. I know it very well. No one can receive anything except that it be given from above. I could show you the truth of that in a hundred passages in the great book. Anyway, let's talk. Uh, what would you care to talk about? Anything at all. Whatever you wish. I will talk about things heavenly or things earthly, things past or things to come, things natural or supernatural, physical or mystical, moral or immoral, sacred or profane, things or foreign or things at home, things old or new, large or small, things profound or things absurd, things essential or things trivial and circumstantial, anything, everything, just so long as it is profitable. Um, <laughs> before we embark on such a lengthy conversation, I think I should tell you that I know a great deal about you. You. you do? Uh, have we ever met? I think not, or am I mistaken? Oh, it is possible. I carry so much knowledge in my head that it must happen every now and then that I misplace a fact or fail to recognise a face. <laughs> anyway, if you know so much, my friend, then you better tell me what you know. Your name is Talkative and you come from our town, the City of Destruction. Your father was Mr Saywell and you lived in Prattling Road. <laughs> That's no secret. Nor is the fact that you are known as a person who is ready for any sort of talk, especially when you are comfortably settled for some gossip over the coffee cups. How dare you? I always speak sincerely and devoutly of matters of faith and belief. But speaking is not necessarily believing. Religion can be on the tongue, but not in the heart. Do not for one moment suppose that to be true of me. Well, then you deny what people say of you, that you seem to be a saint in your conversation, but are a sinner in your heart an angel to any who listen to you, and a devil in your own home. That you talk and talk and talk and talk, but do not believe. Very well. Since you are ready to believe such slanders and to judge me by the tittle-tattle of others, I shall leave you and make my journey alone. I wish you good day. No, wait, wait, uh, wait. Let her go. The loss is no one's but her own. Besides, she has saved us the trouble of leaving her. And yet, I hope she will think over what we have said and maybe change her ways. But will she ever reach the Celestial City? Then again, will we? Come, we must go on. Peace be with you, my friends. Evangelist! Do you know him too? 
He was the one who set me on this road. And me. I am glad to find you together. Oh, I owe you much. Your good advice and encouragement has helped me this far on my journey. I'm pleased to see you again. So am I. Not just because of all that you've done for us in the past, but for your wise words as we face the rest of our pilgrimage. Well, I sowed and you have reaped. But tell me, how have things gone for you both? We have faced all kinds of dangers and temptations, but we have survived. So I see. Come, let us walk as we talk. Your journey is like a race. A prize awaits you at the end. Sometimes pilgrims set out upon the road and get this far or farther, only to then allow someone to take their prize from them. You have faced so many trials and tests, but more await you. So believe without faltering in those truths that you have been told about, but which, being invisible, you cannot see. Do all that you can, and remember that you have all the power in heaven on your side. And what can you tell us of the road ahead? We will shortly come to the town of Vanity, where a great fair is held all year long. What do they sell? All and sundry. At Vanity Fair, you may buy many things that men reckon to be rare and of great value, but much else that any but a fool would count as worthless lusts, pleasures, and delights and every debasement and degradation that can be imagined it sounds terrible. It is, and you will meet many enemies there. Well, then shouldn't we take some other road? You cannot. The road to the Celestial City runs through Vanity Fair. Then every pilgrim has to come this way. That is why the master of the fair, the Lord Beelzebub, built it here upon this road. It has been here long. Vanity Fair has stood on this spot for some 5,000 years. And even the Prince of Princes, when he was here, passed through it to reach his own country. Beelzebub offered him everything, even to become Lord of the Fair, if he would only acknowledge Beelzebub's greatness. And was he tempted? Even for a moment? No! He left the Fair without giving Beelzebub's vanities so much as a glance. Ah, we're almost there, and I must leave you to go on alone. Will we get safely through? Here, one of you will be called upon to seal your promises to the Lord of the Hill with your blood. Although your death will be unnatural and your pain perhaps great, the one who dies will have an advantage over the other in that you will arrive at the Celestial City sooner, as well as escaping many of the miseries that the other will encounter upon the remaining journey. This is a fearful thought to take with us into the town. It would be enough to make many turn back. It would. Be brave and commit the keeping of your souls to the Lord of the Hill and the one who reigns in the city of gold. Farewell. Farewell, good evangelist. Farewell. Well then, faithful, let's go into the town. Though I truly wish that the Celestial City could be reached by any road other than this. I wish so too. But this is the road to the City of Gold. This is our road. Vanity of vanities! All is vanity! Welcome! Welcome! On behalf of our good Prince Beelzebub, Lord and Master of the Fair, we beseech you to come and enjoy the thrills, delights, pleasures and pains of Vanity Fair! Every yard of every street lined with stalls. Every stall surrounded with eager customers. Everything that the world desires, lusts and hungers after may be purchased here. Come and buy, my friends. Come and buy. Glorify your reputation. Win admiration for your name. All the best titles and honors. Knighthoods, lordships and ladyships. Aldums and dukedoms, bishoprics and sainthoods. Lands for sale, good rich lands for sale. Estates and properties, kingdoms, dominions and principalities. Village, town or city, province, country or continent. We hold deeds.
lands and title, proof of conquest, invasion, occupation, and domination. Look at the crowds thronging round the stall. There's certainly no shortage of people willing to buy. Deck yourself in finery, rare gems and precious metals, finest gold and purest silver, diamonds, sapphires and rubies, emeralds and garnets, opals and pearls, moonstones and bloodstones. Satisfy your appetite, sir. Feed your senses. Feastings and drinkings and lastings. Husbands and wives and mistresses. Lovers and cuckolds. Excess and incest. Whores, boards, tulips and tarts. Boys and girls for girls and boys. Fill your fantasies. Indulge your dreams, heavings and deceivings, stealings and cheatings, robberies and lies, quarrels and brawls, fights and feuds, cut purses and cutthroats, intrigues, assassinations, and <laughs> murder most foul. This is a fearful town. Hey, strangers, what's your hurry? Won't you linger a little and view our wares? Where are you from? And why on earth are you dressed in those really strange clothes? <laughs> we must be careful what we say. And remember what it says in my book. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Yeah. What are they whispering to one another about? Yeah. We won't have no secret talk or plotting against us and our trade. That's right. Hey, you two. What will you buy? Are you deaf? Hey! What will you buy? Come and buy from our stalls like honest men. We buy only the truth. The what? The truth. Only the truth. <laughs> <laughs> truth? <laughs> what is truth? I see none here for sale. <laughs> How dare they think they can mock our trade? <laughs> they take us for fools. Troublemakers, that's what they are. Well, if it's trouble they want, we can give it to them. That's right. Let's show them a little Vanity Fair <laughs> hospitality. <laughs> yeah! What is all this hubbub? Yes, it is the Lord Legion, Lieutenant to His Royal and Imperial Highness Prince Beelzebub, Lord and Master of Vanity Fair, who demands to know the reason for all this noise and confusion. Now, explain. These men, my lord, have come into the fair and caused uproar and riot. <laughs> they mocked the fair and abused our merchandise. <laughs> you two, who are you? Where have you come from? Where are you going? We are pilgrims and strangers to this town. On our way to our own country. Where might that be? The Celestial City, and the road to it lies through Vanity Fair. <laughs> Oh, yes. That we know. <laughs> and what have you to say in answer to these charges? We are the ones who have been threatened and abused, and we gave no occasion for such treatment. <laughs> what? None? When these traders asked what we would buy, all we said is that we would buy only the truth. Oh, the truth. <laughs> You may have come here in order to disrupt the running of this great fair. Or you may be nothing more than madmen. It matters little which. Whip them! Beat them! Put them in chains and throw them into the iron cage in the market square. So that all may see their fate and take it for a lesson! So, Christian and Faithful are locked up in the cage as a spectacle for the amusement of the townsfolk. But despite the harshness of their treatment, the pilgrims return only good words for bad and bless those who abuse them. How many more days must we spend in this cage? Courage, Christian. All will be for the best as long as we hold on to our faith. Christian, faithful. Yes? Yes, can, can we help you, friend? Here. 
I bought you some bread and wine. Don't let anyone see. Thank you. Thank you. You know our names. What is yours? I can't tell you. It's too dangerous. I shouldn't have come. It's too dangerous. Don't be alarmed. We won't put you in any danger. Well, I can't stay long. The traders will be here soon. But... But I wanted to talk to you. To ask you... Yes? To speak plain, I've begun to wonder about the hold that certain things have over me. I mean, the things sold at our fair. All the treasures, riches and pleasures of the world. You came here, but you were not by from any of the stalls. Why was that? Because the things that are sold in Vanity Fair will, in the end, destroy the soul. Everything that the people in this town value most highly leads only, and inescapably, to death. Then how can I avoid that fate? By entrusting your life, body and soul to the Lord of the Hill, the one who died on the cross, the Prince of Princes, the Son of the King of Kings, who rules for all eternity in the Celestial City. Where can I find this man? In this book. Every word written here is more dependable than anything else that exists in heaven and on earth. Take it, read it, and in its pages you will meet with the one man who can save you. I will. Thank you. I must go. I pray you will find the one you seek. Although we do not know your name, friend, we will keep you in our thoughts. And you will be in mine. My name is Hopeful. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hopeful. Goodbye. How is your grand apartment, gentlemen? Yeah. <laughs> Does it meet with your requirements, oh high and mighty pilgrim? We are content so long as our Lord requires that we be here. It's not your Lord that keeps you in this cage. Yeah. It's the impeachable justice of Vanity Fair. <laughs> and all the chains and shackles they're wearing. Yeah. If it is his will, he will set us free in his own good time. Set you free? I'd like to see that. Why don't you let them be? Yeah. Why should I? They've done you no harm. That's right. And what exactly has it got to do with you? Well, I'd say they seem like decent enough folk. True yeah. enough. I can think of plenty of people living and working in this town who are more deserving of being locked up in a cage than these men. Aye. Who do you mean, eh? Who? Oh, many. Very many. Whose side are you on? It seems to me that you're in league with these troublemakers. Don't speak to my wife like that. Or you'll feel like what? Say what I want to say. Friends, friends, please, please don't fight over us. Fighting will never settle an argument. You be quiet, or we'll settle your arguments once and for all. I told you, leave them alone. Not supposing we don't. Perhaps we'll have to make you. Ha! I think. Not. Enough! Enough! I said, enough! This is the second riot in these streets in as many days. I will have no more of it! It seems that it was not enough to make an example of you two. Your continuing disruptive behavior is a menace to the peace of this town. You shall be brought to court to answer for your offences. Take them away to await trial. The trial. It's to be in three days. Elizabeth, I didn't hear you arrive. Three days. About the trial. I've been very busy, not just with my writing. The jailer makes fun of me, you know. Scribble, 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 he says. When are you going to be done with all this scribbling? When i finished, I tell him. Only the Lord knows when that will be. Now they've put me back to work. But you're only just getting over your sickness. Ah, oh, I'm fine. <sighs> Making bootlaces is hardly strenuous work. <laughs> it's all wrong. You labouring away making bootlaces, like some common lout in a lock-up. I'm a tinker by trade. I learned long ago not to take pride in how I earn my living, but in how well I do it. Besides, you can sell them. God knows you can use the money. Here. Though they'll make you precious little, I fear. We'll manage. I'd have been glad of the extra if... 
there's been another mouth to feed. If I hadn't lost the baby, I mean. My dear, I know. No man could ever know. Carrying another living soul as part of you and then to lose it. Bring it struggling into the world. And watch the life go out the little body and go cold and grey. There are still the other children. Their own dear mother, may she rest in peace, could not have loved them more. Yes, I loved them. Loved them for their own sakes and for your sake as their father. But I still long for a child that's yours and mine. We'll have another, Elizabeth. When? When you finally get out of this place? And when will that be? And how old will we be then? John. At the trial. Elizabeth. Can't you find a way to agree with what they ask? I beg you. For all our sakes. Your health. The family. Us. You know the answer to what you ask. Uh, yes. Yes. I know you have to stand by what you believe. Do what God tells you to do. If you did anything other than that... And you'd not be the man I love. <laughs> but I'll say this. I don't know what the Lord God thinks he's doing. My dear. But I dare say he does. And if he cares to make his mysterious ways known to us, then I for one will be very grateful. And if he doesn't, then we must still have faith and hope for the best. Oh. Oh. John Bunyan, the accusation against you is that you have instigated several unlawful meetings and have devilishly and perniciously abstained from attending church to hear divine service. How do you answer these charges? Until my imprisonment, I was, by grace, a member of a congregation of whom Christ is the head. But did you or did you not go to church? You know what I mean, to the parish church. No, sir, I did not. Why? Because it is not commanded in the word of God. We were commanded to pray, were we not? Not by the common prayer book. How then? By God's Holy Spirit. As the Apostle Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit with understanding. But we might pray with the Spirit, with understanding, and with the common prayer book. The prayers in that book were made by men, and not by the Holy Ghost working within our hearts. What then do you consider to be prayer? Mumbling over and over the first few words that come into your head, eh? <laughs> a man might have many elegant or excellent words and yet not really pray at all. While another man might pour out his heart before God and use fewer or far less excellent words. Surely it must be lawful to use the common prayer book since Christ himself taught his disciples to pray using the words Our Father which art in heaven. And those very words will be found in the Book of Common Prayer. There are very few who can say the first two words of that prayer, Our Father, that is, call God their Father, knowing what it is to be born again by the Spirit as God's children. And if they do not know that, then it is nothing but meaningless babbling. Take heed of speaking irreverently. You bring great damage upon yourself. We know the common prayer book has been in existence since the Apostles' time and is lawful to be used in the church. Show me one text of scripture that commands me to read the common prayer book and I will use it. Those that have a mind to use it may do so. But for my part, I can pray to God without it. Blessed be his name. And who is your God? Beelzebub? <laughs> I believe it is likely that you are possessed with the spirit of delusion and of the devil. May the Lord forgive you, sir. It is not I that stands in need of forgiveness. <laughs> John Bunyan, hear your judgment. You are to be taken back to prison, there to lie for three months. At the end of that time, if you do not submit to go to church and leave off your preaching... Know this, I... sir. If I was out of prison today, then, by the help of God, I would preach the gospel again tomorrow. If you do not leave off your preaching, you must be banished from the realm. 
And if, after such a day, I shall be appointed for you to be gone, you shall still be found in this realm, then, and I'll tell you this plainly, sir, you shall be stretched by the neck for it. Away with him! <laughs>